G'day punters, welcome to the Mailbag Sydney Review Show. Saturday at Rose Hill basically had a little bit of something for everyone. There was some good betting, some strong performances, a couple of flops. It was just outstanding racing overall. Mark Sheehan, overall the day for yourself, how did you find it? Uh, yeah, it was a very interesting day. As you say, a couple of flops, a uh, couple of very good runs and uh, maybe a bubble burst as well. <laughs> I think that's probably uh, a good way of putting it. Uh, Mark Roden, uh, you found a couple of horses that you're keen to be with. How did the day finish up for yourself? Uh, it was frustrating. I, I, I limited the damage of a couple of market trippers early that I ended up on, which gave me a reasonable start. But the rest of the day, Rose Hill and Kemble as well, everything ran second. It was about a, a trillion worth of seconds for me on, uh, on Saturday, unfortunately. But um, it, was a, it was a really good day's racing, though, I thought, overall, that aside. Yeah, and I think there'll be plenty to, uh, to review, that's for sure. Uh, Rob Scurry, the man in the mounting yard, just racking up win after win after win, seven winning sets in a row. Yep. Congratulations to yourself. Uh, you're seeing them just in extraordinary fashion at the moment. Yeah, I guess, yeah, can't, can't complain. Um, and, and getting a bit of luck, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. You know, that um, my big win on the day was that Wild Planet and looking at the ride on um, the second horse, I think Mark Roden was on, uh, Fun Star. Maybe I got a little bit lucky there. Um, just, yeah. We can talk about that later, but yeah, that was that was good. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll save it for uh, for when we jump into the Theo Marks. So we'll start with race six, which was the run to the Rose, uh, because clearly it was the the race that just blew up social media straight afterwards. In terms of the speed that they've gone for the class, they have gone five point seven lengths fast to the six hundred. When you adjust the figures, basically you average them out against all of the races over the distance and at the track and take into account all the various weather conditions. Uh, Farnan's gone nine lengths fast to the 600, which is, if you have a look at his career, basically three lengths faster than he's ever traveled to the 600. And Mark Sheen, I'll throw it to you. What were your thoughts over the last, say, 20 minutes of betting and then as the race was unfolding? Um, just looking at him in the yard, um, the, the, the mail that he hadn't really developed was certainly there to the eye. Um, he hasn't grown up from a two-year-old to a three-year-old. And I think the drying track was certainly against him as well. Um, when we first got into the form for this race, we had a six and then a five and thought there would be a lot more juice out of the track. Um, they've run two seconds faster than they did in the Gold Slipper. Um, I think that essentially this horse's best form is on rain-affected going. And that track was pretty close to a three on Saturday. So um, he's also had a gut buster. So where he goes from here, I'm not too sure. Maybe not too many more runs. Mark Roden, that's a really good point there. And what do we do with Farnan going forward for the rest of this preparation? He's obviously got a strong starting price over a couple of these rivals, which he may meet again. How are you going to take him going forward? Yeah, with caution. I mean, on face value, it's a total forgive. He was just given no chance of winning. Um, but there, there are other factors. And, you know, if he hasn't developed physically, um, among other things, uh, you know, it was a gut buster as well. There's, I mean, he's going to be he's going to be much bigger odds than Rothfire in the Golden Rose now, or wherever it, you know when they meet. So, you know, just using first principles, he's probably a bet at you know six dollars or whatever he is. But I don't know a horse with his um, his two year old CV is the sort of horse they very quickly bail out of too. So if he doesn't please them in the next uh, week or so, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him again. Rob, run us through the yard. You had quite a fair amount of talented horse flesh here. Uh, what were your yep. impressions on some of these runners? I thought, uh, bar, bar the two, um, the size winner, named Skates Me, I thought they all paraded really well. Um, Farnan, as Mark Sheen was saying, hasn't grown much. Looks a bit of a weddy for mine. Certainly no 30 million or whatever Piero was. <laughs> no $50 million colt to look at. Uh, the The... I was really impressed by by the Rothfire. Um, you know, looking back, I I I could have I could have elevated him up the numbers a bit. Um, he's got great condition on him. He's a tall horse with a great attitude and and you know a good sprinting frame. Uh, I was a bit suckered in again by the wet track horse uh, North Pacific. I thought he'd get the right run on the day, which was sort of on the rail and. Uh, maybe they just went too fast for him, and, and maybe he will be better over 1,400. Um, so I, I, I'm not sacking him, but uh, I, th I think um, 
yeah, the winner, they're going to be very hard hard to beat the winner. Um, he's, he's a really good horse. And um, oh, King's Legacy, like so many Hawks horses on the day, uh, it, it, first up, roly poly fatty, and then second up, just coat trimmed down, coat glowing. Thought he played really well. So mm-hmm. he can, he can, he's in for a good prep. Um, any others we want to talk about? Well, I mean, Rothai was probably the, the one. I, I got this race completely wrong in terms of assessing his overall capabilities. And I guess given the fact that he was travelling five lengths slower than Farn and he just got himself into a perfect spot and run. Uh, Mark Sheen, what are you going to be doing with Rothai going forward? Well, he keeps winning. Um, the doubt I had about him was with a bit of cut out of the track, but that certainly wasn't the case on Saturday. So... Um, top of the ground there he, he went terrific he looked uh, pretty forward to my eye and well he's a winner and a lot of these horses just keep winning and keep um raising the bar so uh, i couldn't knock him going forward i thought king's legacy for a horse that ran last did a, a pretty good job there for a horse who's run off his legs there in 1200 way too short okay we'll jump into race seven which was the theory mark stakes over 1300 and as rob scurry alluded to before uh, Funstar, I guess it's fair to say, wasn't necessarily given the best steer of the day. Uh, Mark Roden, you obviously found Funstar. You had it much shorter than what the market was. J-Mac seemed to have every opportunity to bring the horse in and get a bit of cover, but he was pretty content just to sit out three wide, no cover for a lot of this race. Yeah, which was totally the wrong spot to be on Saturday, as, as we forecast. Um, uh, yeah, ended up in, in, a, in a bad spot, I thought. Um, I think... He was he was trying to find the rail, and then um, he, for some reason he didn't want to cross. Um, what was it, Nick and Over, and uh, I think it was Wild Planet. And then Nash just half braked on um, special reward in front of him, so that just took rails out of play for him. But I mapped it running line, and, that, and there was no reason he couldn't have been in the running line. Which you know, there's been about a neck between him and the winner of the, the line. Um, Might have been the difference. Um, Wild Planet was held up early in the straight, but ended up getting no, here. He effectively had a perfect run despite being held up, in my opinion. But it was a... I wasn't on good terms with myself once I saw him out there three wide. I mean, she was travelling quite well, and she did, you know, just stride to the lead at the top of the straight, looked to look like she might win anyway. But um, odd ride for the day, really odd ride. I mean, also considering what he'd done earlier on Moonga, mm-hmm. where he had, you know, he had the same sort of plan, go straight to the fence, and he's ridden that brilliantly. And, yeah, he obviously knew how the track was playing uh, and what the right approach was on the day, and then... Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, it looked like he was going for that rail spot early and then just bailed out on the plan. I don't know what happened. Mark Sheen, uh, Wild Planet, Fun Star, they were both horses that uh, obviously were well in the market. Did you end up playing in this race? Yeah, I was on the winner, luckily, so I got, got the right run in the race. Fun Star, uh, to, to me, just sweated up a little bit and probably improved the run, which Rob will probably elaborate on uh, in a moment. Um, I thought Wild Planet was in a... It was always going to get a good run in that race, uh, just the way that I mapped it. And um, uh, step up in distance was in his favour as well. And the brakes went his way. Um, look, he's a good, honest uh, performer. Fun star will certainly improve with the run under a belt. They're the only two I'd, I'd want to be on going forward. Yeah, she's not far that fun star, but that was a good race for her. And, you know, she, she might have a win or two left in her, I think. But she's not, you know, the superstar mare that she showed some potential of being earlier on, I think. Maybe these jocks are uh, looking out for the next couple of weeks. We've got an Everest coming up and a couple of other races, so you don't yeah. want to be giving a jockey a shave and getting two or three weeks. No. So uh, maybe that's something to think about in the next uh, week or so because the Everest is coming up. Yes. Ding. <laughs> Rob, uh, speaking of, of cash, uh, Wild Planet, big bet for yourself. Yeah, uh, look, it was the first time in weeks where everything lined up with, you know, the the, the map was right, the the data that, that I used from you guys was right, and this horse just, like I said before, the, these Hawks horses second up, at the Doubtland in Melbourne, they've just improved lengths and lengths, so um, it was just one of those times where I just had to, you know, it was a case of just pulling the trigger as the price seemed right. Um, and yeah, it was, I was slightly concerned when it was getting held up. Um, I, th- I thought I saw, uh, Tommy duck back to the inside and I kind of put my hands to my head for a second and I was worried and thank God fun star kicked when she did. Cause if she didn't kick, he doesn't get out. He doesn't get out. And, and I'm just left with a, you know, another tale of bad beat, but, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a great, 
great win and you know got a few uh tingles after that one you know <laughs> you are feeding them unbelievable you win every time you go to the races and you're blowing up about imaginary bad beats that didn't happen it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay all right yeah all right well it, it was imaginary but yeah for, for a little while there i was i was very very concerned and um yeah look it's, it's nice to get one my way <laughs> If you're not feeling the heart at some point, feeling like it's going to explode, you haven't had enough on, surely. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's not not just that. Um, yeah, I was, I don't know, it was, it was just a big, big, big bet for me, big player. Yeah. And, you know, for for once, as I said, it's usually just the something doesn't add up. It's either the map or the data, but all three lined up. And that was the reason such a big player, that sort of odds. Yep. Just as, yep. as a serious note, that's that's a really great way to approach staking. Just on a general point, when you've got, you know, a horse that ticks all the boxes for you. I mean, a lot of people half end up staking to the market. You know, they'll have their biggest bets on a two twenty chance, but you're having pretty much close to your maximum bet on a five six dollar chance. That's a really good aggressive way to stake, in my opinion. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll jump into race eight. The Shiraco stakes over twelve hundred. Uh, look, if we want to compare in terms of the early speed that they've gone here, they've gone 7.7 lengths fast to the 600. So basically one and a half lengths slower than what Farnan was travelling. Um, to put it in perspective, Rothfire would have been travelling just behind the pair of Adelong and also Invictus oh, really? Salute. So uh, that, that sort of gives you an indication of the speed between the two races. But uh, bless and I'm going to uh, defer to Rob Scurry in a moment to get the correct pronunciation here, but bless Hort beyond hers uh, cotton socks because it got me out of a, the fun and hole that I was in. Um, Mark Sheehan, race eight, did you invest in this event? Yeah, it was on uh, the winner in Fasica, as we mentioned in the previous show. They both tried particularly well. Fasica was disappointing here. Uh, she did get back a little bit further than I thought, but I think I have seen a parade better. Rob can talk about that. But Hawkeye on her looked trained up and ready to go. It was just a matter of whether she could get in. I, uh, once she got to about 13 to 2, I thought that was uh, you know, a reasonably good bet, and I was on the favourite as well. Other runs in the race, Evelina was a great run, got back and ran on. Subpoenaed up on the inside, probably looking for a little bit further now, and Flick didn't have much luck. Like right back from a, a wide alley and hit the line okay, but uh, fantastic performance for the winner to sit up on the speed and keep it, excuse me, keep going for Rob. Uh, your impression on, on the winner? Um, I can't exactly remember the, the Waller comment you made, but just run us through how it paraded. Very, very forward. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, she she like for a Waller runner first up. I, I don't know how long she was off for, but um, yeah, very very forward. So obviously a few trials and and ready to go. I was concerned the map. Uh, I didn't really like the the fact that she was going to be kind of you know we had a kind of th three wide possibly on on a hot speed. So that was the concern. But I had to sort of cover her like Mark. I I back for Seeker and um, kind of ruining that you know as my main play in the race and and, and Hawbury on her and um, Miss Mizzy which for somehow they knew maybe that stable's just going terribly but I thought she paraded very well um and yeah the, lot, lots of lots of good looking mares in in this race but but the winner um uh and you know not typical Waller to be that forward first up so I, I, she couldn't be a losing result for me sure Mark Roden what are we doing with the seeker going forward it's jumped reasonably short here two dollars 45 or so 264 on the fair uh did seem to get into a good spot, as Mark Sheehan said, but just didn't seem to let down after looming in the straight. Uh, any excuses for yourself? Um, possibly. She, she did a tiny bit of work early, although she did get into the running line um, after that. And, uh, yeah, I, she had a good enough run. She didn't um, uh, finish off well enough. Um, I got, someone told me yesterday that she pulled up with um, bruising and cuts. She might have been clipped from behind or something in the run, which go some way to explaining it i think but um and joe pride was saying she's not a rose hill horse in the paper yesterday as well so they're wheeling a few excuses out but um certainly disappointing at face value uh the only i mean the winners to, to me that doesn't look you just can't take anything away from the winner she's mm. done all the work um from a wide gate in a good speed but the, everything's had their chance to beat her i think that it was just a really impressive performance um Subpoenaed, yeah. I mean, she's obviously looking for 1,400. I think that's her best trip. But um, she sort of cheated a bit in this race. The speed suited her, and she's just done nothing early and come up the, the fence, which was a plus, I think. So, I mean, we will see the best of her at 1,400. But 
Mm. Um, again, she's she's just not a horse you're going to get value for ever. I think she's just got too big a. Well, most of her best wins have been in small fields too, haven't they, Mark? Where she hasn't That's... been too far back. Yeah, and there was one one of her wins. Um, she got awfully held up and overcame trouble and got up to win. You know, which always puts a premium on the price as well. That that kind yeah. of thing. You know, that that it was in a very weak race, but it looks like a an amazing win in inverted commas. So, yeah, I, she just hasn't. I'm not sure where they're going next with it, to be honest. But uh, she just hasn't done enough to justify her reputation at this point, to me. Okay. On rep- on reputation, F- Fasika seems to have a, a big reputation. Goes around maybe a bit unders, but um, I think she can improve certainly off this run, as Mark Sheen was saying. She she's a, she, she was a little bit underdone, but I think she's grown a grown this this prep. She seems a bit taller, and I, I think she's um, you know she's going to win win somewhere this this time in. Yeah, I don't think I've seen her sweat like that before. The rock she just sweated up a little bit. I, I might be um, I might be wrong there, but I, I I think I've seen her parade better. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, oh, de- de- definitely, definitely, and, and you know she had a, she was a bit wobbly uh, around the belly as well. Um, so yeah, she, she, yeah, looking, looking, looking back, how, how did, it, you know, how do we back her, Mark? <laughs> we back her at that price, yeah. it's not like us. Yeah, we probably forgiven, don't you? Sometimes, but anyway, <laughs> still get the result. That's the main thing. Uh, look, we'll go back and review a couple of the earlier races on the card. Race horse, the Vale, Rick Worthington, over eleven hundred meters, and. I guess it's probably uh, the way you could summarise this race was Mask Crusader. Did you want to be with it from a potentially sticky alley or did you want to be against it? And in the end, the market was still reasonably firm laid. It just jumped at evens on the fair. Uh, Mark Sheen, did you have any play in this race? No, I was worried with the draw and I, I didn't know what to do with uh, for two. So I was going to back Hilo, actually, but I mm-hmm. didn't like the look of it in the yard at all. It looked very... Uh, very woolly and a uh, bit backward, I thought. Um, in fact, first, second and third all missed the start and Fatouz and Hilo went back to second, last and last and, and Mars Crusade had pressed on. Um, look, I think this was a forgive run for him. I've never seen a horse sit forward and a limb in the circle and run a place uh, in, in 40 years, so I don't know how it's only going to be a half a length. Oh, it still, it's still loomed, isn't it? Uh, Mark Rowan... Oh, we didn't actually talk about race four on the preview show. What no. price do you have masked uh, Crusader? Well, this is, I've got to collect in this race. I, I had it in the winner mark 330 edge of two. I just, yeah. I mean, the, of course, after it was four wide, everyone wanted to lay into Tommy after the race. But uh, where did it go from that gate on the map? I, it was either four wide on a limb or three wide with cover further back. It, it mm. was just a no-win situation for him, I thought. And that's why I couldn't entertain him at even money. I was, I was actually surprised he held his spot, but the, you know, the, the market makers had obviously said he's an even money chance, and that's that's where he landed. Um, pretty good effort by for, for twos, though. Um, I thought she'd be forward, and then she missed the start, and she's ended up three wide with cover, which, um, I mean, certainly she had a much better run than Mask Crusader, but that back and three wide wasn't a place to be on Saturday either, and she's managed to get the job done. So, uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of merit in her performance, I think. Uh, Rob, I'll throw to you. Uh, Mask Crusader for two, uh, both horses that you've had time for previously. What did you think? Look, uh, again, with this Hawks horse, I was scathing on Mask Crusader first up um, on the stable, even running him on that heavy 10. And, and when he walked into the yard um, and the price was 240, I thought this is, or 30, this is going to shorten. So I put a, had a good bet on him. Uh, I'm denied about whether really unloading for the subscribers. And then the map just said no. So mm-hmm. I let the race go, apart from the fact I, I ended up um, a small place bet on Kookaburr. Uh, who I thought was had huge condition on it for a horse so deep into a prep. And uh, is that not a bit of a blight on this race that, you know, like a, a horse like that has finished so close racing outside the lead? It is for the ones who've had every chance. Yeah. And and just a comment on, on Hong Kong Darren, like I don't know where he's getting a uh, Vale, Rick Worthington, but no, he kept right. saying yeah, it's, he kept... That's, that's correct. It's Latin. <sighs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Too good for me, Hong Kong, Darren. But yeah, I thought it was fail. Oh, he's right about fifty percent of the time. He's not. He doesn't get them all right. But uh, no, he's, he's right in that case. Oh, all right, and the other race we should touch on is the Dulcify Quality over fifteen hundred, the listed race, namely just because the winner Moanga, uh, Mark Sheen, you'd thrown it out a few weeks back, and uh, here he was in the city for the first time, and probably in a little bit of an awkward spot for some of the race, but. Some good closing splits of what was a fast tempo. They've gone four lengths fast to the 600. Just run us through how he paraded to your eye and then 
uh, did you actually have a bet as well on him? Yeah, it was on him. God bless his heart. Um, <laughs> didn't look too good at stages in the race. Look, physically, he's got a lot of improvement to come. He hasn't really furnished as yet. So I'd say probably gloaming and then spring champion and I'll be straight to the paddock um, and come back uh, next season. Look, he's got a great turn of foot, still very green. But he was helped by the fact that Yardstick ran them along a bit here. Excuse me. Uh, Yardstick ran them along a little bit here and uh, that probably helped him a little bit. But he did overcome a few checks in the run. He got a check when Overlord crashed into the fence and then had to change course in the straight again. So I thought it was a pretty good win. I, I wouldn't sack Jet Propulsion. I mm. thought he was in the death there all the way. Didn't get control of the race and stuck on quite well at the finish. He's a lovely horse. I think if he gets back to about 1,400 metres and gets control in a race... Um, he's certainly one to follow. Mark Roden, uh, your pricing on Malunga and how he's rating on your figures at the moment? Um, well, sectionally, he was unbelievable at Newcastle um, in his win. That I think he ran. I think he ran his last two hundred something like two seconds faster than Jamar over the same trip a race later. Totally different pace, pace profile, but still, I mean, that you know, 14, 12, 14 lengths quicker in, in a furlong is amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, the map put me off him. I marked him five to two for this race, three fifty. Um, didn't really look like getting there. Um, however, um, yeah, great ride. It, it, it panned out. Apart from the check, it panned out okay for him, and it was a really great ride. Going straight to the fence was a winning move, but um, he's made the best of a bad situation there. It looked, it looked like a bad map turned out okay. He's certainly the horse in the race with upside. It's, it's not a great feel. Take Mark's point about Jeff Propulsion. Yeah. He, I had him marked a lot longer than Mark, and he performed a lot better than I thought he would. So he's obviously got something. But the, uh, oh, in Global Quest, he, he hadn't run beyond 1,200, had he? And they've thrown him in first up over 1,500 here. Um, that's, that's, there's some merit in that effort as well. But as a group, the rest of them aren't much, I don't think. Yeah. And, Rob, I'll, just before, uh, I remember you threw out Mwanga after your folks had seen him at Newcastle. Yep. And I can't remember what the exact term was, but was it something to do with uh, this is a, a group stallion in waiting? <laughs> no, I don't think it was that. I think I, Mark said it first. And then, yeah, then my, uh, it's actually my brother in law. Oh, uh, right. he, he texted me and just said to just follow this horse wherever it goes. I, I wasn't overly taken with him as a type. I, I, I think he's um, maybe like a bit of a, you know, he's, he's lightly framed. And I think Mark Sheen said, I think he'll be better next time in. Um, Wallace, the master, can he keep the condition on this horse? And, um, you know, that's where we're lucky enough to go to the track and see that. Um, but I, I can't see there being much difference between this lot and the, the run, horses that ran at Randwick, i.e. Uh, all-time legend and Petronius. I think there, there's there's not much between them. And I think uh, Malunga will go, go around unders. But um, if he's on a wet track, he might be even better suited. Oh, I think they're four-year-olds, Rob. Oh, those ones? They're four-year-olds, mate. All right, just just like my dirty work last week. No idea. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, it, it's going to the spring champion. It, and Gloaming and spring champion, Love Tap's the second favourite there. And uh, they, Love Tap was a big firmer after winning at Goulburn on Friday. And uh, Moonga's the current favourite for the spring champion. Don't feel too bad about that, Rob. When I was working in corporate bookie land, I, I put a four-year-old mare and an Oaks market all in once uh, after I'd seen it win at Kembla for about 20 minutes. <laughs> well, so. uh, well I, just before this race, I did go through the uh, futures markets looking for all-time <laughs> legends uh, for the spring champion stakes. And, uh, so where is it? Um, anyway, you live and learn. But, um, we all make blues, mate. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's it, you know. Um, but, yeah, speaking of all-time legend, I'll be... Um, if the M5's looking all right, I'll be going back out for some redemption at Warwick Farm on Wednesday. Um, and, yeah, just, just get out there for, you know, haven't been out there since that day and I loaded up on him. And, um, yeah, hope, hoping for another result. So a bit of bonus mail for the subscribers. Beauty. Well, you're absolutely flying, uh, going for eight now in a row. So go well there. Uh, Mark Roden, Mark Sheehan. I'll get a horse to follow from you each. Uh, Mark Roden, I'll start with you. Um, so... Uh, I've got a couple in races we didn't actually touch on, but they were one was first up, one was second up, totally unsuited. So I'm just going to be um, looking to see if they get in suitable races next time. That is Vegas Jewel out of race three and Will Me In out of the last. Okay. Mark Shan for yourself. Um, I thought King's Legacy, uh, from viewpoint of, say, the Caulfield Guineas, um, I thought that was a really good run on Saturday. He sweated up like he did in the Golden Slipper first up and then improved out of sight off that. So I think he's ticking over quite nicely. 
Um, and I thought on Taunt, um, well, just hand it up to the stable mate there in the last, they got into an awkward position. So I think if uh, it's ridden a little bit more aggressively next start, uh, might get back in the winner's storm. Yeah, I think that's a, a fair comment there. It wasn't necessarily uh, the finest ride of all time. Rob, do yourself one to follow? Oh, from my new favourite stable, the Hawks stable, and my new favourite horse, Wild Planet, wherever he goes, he should go well. Um, and, yeah, th- from this meeting, that's that's about it. We'll, we'll take okay. it as they come. And I'll follow the uh, the French plonk in uh, Horat Brion. Horat Brion. Horat Brion, yeah. Good. yeah. We'll, we'll go yeah. with that. Um, thank you all for joining me. Uh, we'll basically join again uh, for the preview show on Thursday. And... Uh, We'll review that meeting come next week. But uh, until then, go well, guys. See you, boys.